Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get Unreal Engine, how to install it, how to load up one of the uh, default levels and then how to package it so that you can then view the level in a web browser and then should you so wish to make that available online. So first thing I need to do is to go to the Unreal Engine website so I just search bar tap in Unreal Engine and it should come up as first option unrealengine.com go here and you need to create uh, an account to uh, be able to download the launcher so I already have an account so I can uh, just sign in and once I'm signed in um, or if I create an account you'll see it comes up with my username and I get the option to download now this downloads the launcher not the Unreal Engine itself. Um, the reason for that is there's various kind of elements to it. And what I want to do is select the creator's license. This is for um, free use for students, educators. If you are intending to make your first million through Unreal, which may happen down the line, then you'd obviously check that one. So select, and then uh, you saw the little thing go across there. It's downloading the launcher. I'm just gonna uh, fast forward this point here because what I want to do once it's downloaded that either on a Mac or a PC you'll install that program and then launch the launcher and um, actually download the engine so I fired up the um, launcher and uh, the home page is this one here but the one I'm interested in is the one Unreal Engine now um, the what I suggest is the latest version of the engine as of the time of uh, making this is actually here if I want to add and install a new version of the Unreal Engine you'll see the most recent version there's a drop down here shows you all the different versions there is a, a beta kind of preview version of the next version 4.25 and you can uh, go all the way back to the first version what I am recommending that you download because um, they took out the functionality to publish to the web with version 4.24 is to uh, install 4.23 which you can see I've already got installed on here. So if you are to install an engine and these um, are in the order of gigabytes I think probably you need to have um, a good 10 gigabytes of free space available as a minimum I will also publish the minimum system requirements because um, although the, the more horsepower you've got on your machine the better um, if it's just going to be a, a really unpleasant experience then um, we might as well uh, stop now so what I suggest is you download this version 4.23.1 it doesn't appear here because I've already got it so if you click on um, the particular version I mean just to show you equally work on 4.23 if I was to then click install it will then start the process uh, ask me where I want to install it and then download that that will take a while because as I say it's quite a, a large file so let's assume you've done that and then once you've done that you'll come back here and you'll notice that you're now able to launch the engine so let's assume time has passed you've done something uh, meaningful come back here and you're ready to launch the engine I'm running this on Mac by the way but it is cross-platform so it'll also work on PC as well so I'm going to click launch and uh, depending on the horsepower of your system this will take anything from no time at all to slightly longer this is the important part um, because as you can see I've um, even on this laptop I've got a number of uh, development projects I'm running but what I want to do is create a new project and um, there are various uh, there's two kind of development platforms C++ which if you're a hardcore coder um, is very powerful but blueprint is really the way to go if you're just starting out and then there are various kind of default options first person that's the kind of doom like interface um, but what we're actually going to be going with is this third person where you control this uh, mannequin figure and can move them around a particular environment. There are also presets for virtual reality and for driving games uh, as well as blank projects. But the one we want to, for the purposes of this exercise, is third person here. And given that we're publishing on the web, um, 
I'm going through and learning and picking up stuff as I go along. But uh, on the basis that what you want to do is keep the file size um, to a minimum because obviously you've got to upload this and then it's got to be downloaded by the person on the other end. Uh, you've got a choice here. I would go for mobile stroke tablet. I would also go for scalable 3D or 2D, which means that the resolution of the textures and so on is um, less hardcore. But I would add the uh, starter content uh, because for later exercises, this will give us uh, something uh, to play with. And then the other thing you need to do is to allocate it a, a folder. So I'm going to call this um, browser 2 create a folder for it, open, and then the name of the project I'm going to call browser 2 as well. Um, and then choose create project. And you get the same kind of launch screen again, but this time it will actually open up with the third person level already there. Now in a sense, in this video, we're not gonna do very much at all. Um, this is the default third person level layer. If I just click play, I can view it in this window. I need to click, and now I can use the arrow keys, I can use the jump key, and uh, what we've got is a controllable mannequin that I can move around. This is like the, the kind of, ooh, uh, this, is the, <laughs> this is the kind of basis for um, the starter of a, a kind of game. And what I'll be doing in, in future videos is swapping out various kind of materials, adding different sort of functionality. So rather than being game interface, it could um, be the front end for a kind of library of materials, or it could be um, a kind of learning tool or something uh, very distinct from this. But we're going to go with this because you can obviously see this is um, something that I think it'd be quite impressive if we can just um, take this and then chuck it online. Uh, by a few simple steps. So press the escape key, come out of that. Uh, I can move around this and we'll come to the interface and how you can manipulate, change things uh, in later videos. So there is the project. All I need to do at this point is if I go up to here, file, package, project, and um, I'm going to cover this in, in later ones. You can see that I could make this available for Android, for um, iPhones, for um, desktop usage on, say, a Mac. What I want to do is HTML5 web browser. Click that, and it's simply going to ask me where I want to uh, save the files that I would normally upload to a web server. So I'm going to just put them in that browser to directory created. Just click open. And now there will be quite a long pause because uh, what it's doing is taking all the various textures, materials, the code, and packaging it up in such a way that it can be unpacked on a web browser. So there will be um, a pause here. Depending on the, the power of your machine, this may take, um, as I, I've done this previously. So uh, in this instance, it didn't take very long because I, I went through this and made sure it kind of worked. So it's, drawing on those previous files, but it can take you know quite a while. So I've done that. What I want to do now is to actually find those files it's created. So it's going to Finder and Unreal Browser. <laughs> and Browser 02. See actually the project. And there it is, HTML5. Click that and I get a bunch of uh, files here. Uh, change the view. Now almost all of these, I'll put some info in the um, text below, but almost uh, all of these get uploaded to your web server. But in the first instance, you may not have access to or you may not be sure that this is what you want to do, so you're not committing to a web server where you can actually host this for the time being. Uh, it does provide a means by which you can check that it actually runs in a web browser. And if you were on a PC, you'd launch this program here, which is an executable. If you're on a Mac, um, the equivalent is here. What this does is launch a terminal window. So I'll double click that. Okay. And uh, you keep this open. The important thing is this is the web address where it's going to be. Uh, I hate this. Right. And I just need to control C that and then come to a web browser. Put this in. OK, 
Okay, so um, I didn't have much luck running in Safari, hence the uh, <laughs> slight jump in the video there. But I've uh, launched Chrome. I've copied and pasted the uh, address there, and then in fact, if I just go back, so I copy and paste the address from terminal window, which is here localhost http colon backslash backslash localhost colon 8000 backslash which launches a particular server and it comes up with a directory list of all the files in that directory and launched the terminal window from if I click that uh, it downloads the program compiles all the data and there we have um, the game in a web browser window if I press escape I can come over here and go full screen and as you can see I've now got access so I can run this um, jump and so on and so forth so uh, in this video we've gone from uh, downloading Unreal Engine, installing it um, launching the default level uh, then packaging it up for a web browser and then getting it to run in a web browser and, and in subsequent videos what we'll be doing is obviously changing this from just being the default Unreal Engine we'll uh, create a, a game loader so instead of that uh, screen coming up because it's going to take longer to uh, unpack and download that from a remote location so we're going to create a launcher for that I'll also change this interface here because this is kind of functional rather than so I can you know, pause this this game is not now running and then resume and now we're back live again and move around um, and various other things so you can create meaningful useful content that you can distribute um, online by publishing to a particular web server so that's it for the first video